Welcome back to International Scale Model on November's new show. Uh, this week, this month, what we've got coming up is we've got the forum update, obviously as as usual, with including all the GBs, the SIGs, competitions and prizes and winners and everything like that. Uh, we've also got uh, what model reviews are coming from Paul and myself for December. Uh, we've also got uh, Paul and I's um, current build updates. Uh, not a lot this month, I don't think. We've been a very very busy month this month. Um, we've got obviously the prize draw winners, we've got a couple of reviews, we've got a Tamiya compound review the um, comp, uh, for cockpit glass and things like that. Uh, we've also got a Vallejo, a Vallejo AF, AFV paint system uh, review and we've also got Scale 75 flesh tone uh, set review as well from Paul. Uh, we've also got some shout outs at the end of the, the, uh, the new show and lots of other things besides. So uh, let's, uh, let's crack on. Well, first off, I'm going to do a bit of shameless plugging uh, for Ultimate Modelling products, obviously. Uh, we've now got the uh, website up and running to, to buy products from um, directly from ourselves. Um, obviously, there are all the other retailers out there on the high street that are selling the products as well, but we've got our own website. We're doing a, a thing. Um, it, we can post uh, all of our products to nearly all the European countries now, uh, obviously, as well as the UK. Unfortunately, we can only send stuff to the US that's... Um, we can't send a thin oil cleaning to the US or Canada just yet, but we are working on that, believe us. Um, we've also got um, a uh, Facebook page too as well. You just search on um, on uh, Facebook for uh, Ultimate Modern Products and they'll come up there. Uh, but also there's uh, just a little, uh, there's a 10% discount for members of ISM with post counts over 50. Um, and you can get a code for that from me if you just PM me on the site um, or Paul and uh, we can give you a code to, to get a 10% discount on all the products online. If you're a member of ISM, obviously with a uh, minimum 50 post count. Uh, there's also a further discount on the site, a normal discount. If you order three of one product, you'll get a 10% discount on the, on all of those products that you've bought uh, you know, in that thing. So if you buy a starter set of sanders, you buy three starter sets, you get 10% off and off, off of all of them, not just one of them. So um, uh, so that's something we thought we'd offer people as well. Uh, but anyway, the, the website's there, so just thought we'd know. There's the, there's the uh, web address. If you want to go and have a look, if you fancy buying something, then please do. If you don't, don't, okay? Uh, right, okay, the second bit of uh, thing before we get started underway with the forum and everything is I just wanted to say another big thank you to for Greg Chess for donating this um, 128 B17 Flying Fortress. Now, this kit is £130 worth of kit and Greg kindly donated it to ISM and we've got a competition running at the moment um, and it's a caption competition and there's uh, five pages already and uh, it's only been up a day and I've got to say some of the responses have had me increases I think some brilliant ones it's going to be really really hard to judge that one um, but keep them coming it really is good and it's such an easy competition to win a 130 pound kit and a different 130 pound kit it's not something anyone would normally buy either so uh, Greg thanks again mate it's been absolutely magic that you've done that for us and uh, we really really appreciate it and I'm sure the prize winner will as well okay so now we're going to go on to uh, the ISM forum news the GBs and the C and things like that okay obviously we've got the uh, Cold War um, era GB which is our main one which started on 14th of September and runs to the 14th of January so not only we're going to have a quick update on that but we're also going to have a quick reminder that you've got most of you guys we've only just literally got six weeks left to run on that that's nearly four months that's obviously three, nearly three months that's been running now uh, so uh, hopefully you should have a lot of time off over Christmas so if anyone's got anything um, any spare time then you, you can crack on with your GB builds and everything. There's been a massive response to this with some excellent entries so far uh, and some cracking builds. I mean there's a few finished already and there's a taster of just a couple of them, very quick pictures for you. Um, some cracking builds so far and um, I mean there's I think there's three pages of builds in total so um, I mean that is going to be an absolute nightmare to uh, to judge because the the quality is just immense. It really is. I'm so impressed with it, and it really is fun watching. I may not meant comment on all of the threads, but I do see all of them. So uh, some cracking builds and some great info there and everything. It's going to take Paul and I a while to judge these ones. I think that's for sure. Um, so there is only six weeks left. So if you've got uh, one in there and you, you you're sort of halfway through or anything like that. Crack on six weeks, um, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be done. So uh, that's good. The next one we've got is um, excuse me, is the uh, long-term non-military uh, figure build, and that started on first September and runs for six months from then. Um, obviously, the rules for that is just try something out of your comfort zone. So if you don't usually do figures, um, then that's the reason for this. Now we're obviously halfway through this one now. Um, I've 
got to a point on mine where I've just I've got to start. I've really got to knuckle down and, and get get cracking on it. To be honest with you, because uh, I've been pretty lazy with that one. But uh, time is is of the essence on there. Um, there's a lot of interesting entries. Again, we've had a couple finish. Um, really, really nice indeed. Uh, top quality uh, things like that. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see um, all the other ones finish as well. So um, obviously we've got all the prizes and things like that uh, for the long term figure GB. We've got um, luck. Uh, the guys at Darkwell Creations have actually um, said to us that uh, they've given us an extra prize, an extra first prize. So, first prize will be two zombie figures, okay, which is which is excellent. So you get two figures for the win now, not just one. And they're 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 not cheap. They're a good thirty pound each, those or twenty five pounds. And obviously you got um, you got second and third places, which are packs like this. Now these. Uh, will uh, these are 124 scale, so they'll go with any car kit that you're building or anything like that. So uh, you've got some fuel drums and containers and other odds and sods there as well. So, um, but yeah, I mean that's great from from uh, Rin at Dark Cloud Creation. So thank you very much for that, mate. Obviously they've just released their Judge Anderson 2000 AD figure, um, which I plan on starting very very soon as well. So she's a bit of a hot chick. Um, so, so yes, and I forgot to, to mention when we did the um, uh, uh, Cold War era GB of the prizes. Obviously we've got the first prize here which is the Velom Antonov. And we've got the second prize which is the A7K Corsair 2. Um, it's a fabulous hobby boss kit. And we've got the third prize which is the Mil 24 Hind from Metalleri. Uh Now uh, again, wonderful prizes and we do will have a fourth prize on that. Of some UMP products as well. Okay, uh, now the other SIGs that are going at the moment, we've got uh, the Whirly Bird SIG going on. Uh, that runs from the 11th of October to the 11th of January, so we've got two finishing in January. Um, and that's the same rules of all the other GBs and SIGs as well. Uh, and that's coming along excellently, you know, it really is starting to look good. And again, a lot of people doing some Whirly Birds that they haven't done before in the past, so very, very nice stuff. Uh, the prizes for that one, I think, first prize was. Uh, the Life Colour Pigment and um, Colour Set, the Dust Set. I've actually done a review of this, which will be in this month's show as well. Uh, no, no, sorry, that was in last month's show. I've already released it as a separate thing. We've then got the AFE Vallejo AFE uh, Paint Set, which is the uh, third prize. Um, and that will be, uh, of that, there is a review of that this month, actually, in the show. And we've also got second prize is the AK Streaking Effects um, kit. Uh, which is uh, which is really nice too. So those those are the prizes for the Whirly Bird. So you can say there's only what five weeks left on that. So um, yeah, five weeks. Yeah, it must be just about just just a little less than the other one. So um, the, but there are again there's some great finishes so far. I mean I really am impressed with the level of uh, models we have on ISM for sure. Um, now the other the other sig that's going on at the moment, which is kind of a, a quick sig. Um, is the Holy Toledo It's a Panzer II. Uh, now this is obviously I think a lot of you um, know the, the score on this one. Um, Lewis Coladito one just came on and said he wants to do some reference shots for a Panzer II. Uh, could anyone help him out? And uh, I think 16 pages later it turned into a SIG. Um, and uh, I think there was initially six or seven people that wanted to do it. So we said okay we'll set up a, a quick SIG, just a two month thing. And um, one thing progressed into another, and now I think there's over 20 entries um, for this this SIG. Now, obviously, there's not many Panzer IIs out there, but there's loads of different ones being built, and it's really interesting. I'm actually trying to crack on my mind. We're halfway through that group build at the moment. There's about uh, it finishes till 31st of December, so there is literally a month left. Um, and um, there's uh, every person who finishes gets over the finish line, receives uh, a pack of, uh, a starter pack of ultimate model sanders. Um, so, uh, and that's for everyone that, that actually finishes uh, their model. So um, it'll be interesting to see. I wish I hadn't said that now, it's gonna cost us an absolute fortune. Uh, but it'll be worth it, because it's a great little one of those spur of the moment seeks. So I've really enjoyed that one coming together and getting you know, getting underway as well. So uh, hopefully Lewis will, uh, we're gonna have, have Lewis help us pick the winner on that one as well. Um, and uh, there, there aren't really, there isn't going to be a winner because everyone's going to get a set of those. But um, you know, someone should say, well, this is the best effort so far. But uh, but there you go. The other thing that's on the site is the uh, 116 Tiger Hobby Boss 116 Tiger Buddy Build. 
Uh, that's cracking along now. We've got four entries. Someone else has just entered. I think it's Pedro, Pedro Fernandez. Um, he's come along and it's great to see that that's building up and they're all helping each other with hints and tips and everything. So if you've got a Hobby Boss 116 Tiger and you like a bit of help, jump on over and have a look. Um, and I think uh, that's about it. Oh no, I just uh, want to mention that um, once all the uh, GBs and SIGs are finished, uh, we don't delete them or anything like that for the site. They are still there. All your builds are there, all the photos, the chat, everything is all the reveals, the reveal video and everything. If you go to the um, uh, GB and SIG section and then look right at the very bottom, it said it'll say archived uh, old GBs and SIGs and it, they'll all be in there. So whenever anyone finishes, it always goes in there. So don't worry not that we've had a few questions about whether they disappear or not. They don't. They're right there. They're always there. Okay. And that's the end of the GVs and SIGs. So uh, we've got uh, these, um, I think we're going to have the flesh, flesh tone review for the Scale 75 paint set from Paul now. So over to Paul. Okay guys, so review today of uh, Scale 75 flesh paint kit. Uh, I first became aware of this when DC87, Dan on International Scale Model Forum, bought a set. Uh, it looked absolutely fantastic in the little review video he did. Um, we then bought a set to test our thinner with, um, and it worked flawlessly, as does everything else. Uh, and I'm left with the set now, so I thought I'd do a review of it. Um, I've got another flesh paint set, I've got uh, the Life Colour one, and obviously I've got the uh, Vallejo flesh tones, as well as some Citadel flesh tones. Vallejo flesh tones are good, I really do rate Vallejo paint. But I don't think they give you enough variation in the colours to give you enough tones. Uh, the Life Colour set's fantastic, absolutely love that one. But there's a lot more different colours in this one to give you a bit more uh, variety in the tones you can do. So, first off, inside you get a little paint, paint set guide, which is fantastic, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the tones, we go to the overhead camera, are there. So far left you've got Pale Skin, Light Skin, Golden Skin, Basic Flesh, Pink Flesh, Arabic Shadow, Indian Shadow and African Shadow. So as you can see you've got all various tones and shades to add highlights etc over there. So it really is, you know, it's a different flesh tone kit because it just gives you so many variations on the tone. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, you can see some of the examples of the painting, if I can get the light off, there you go. From scale 75. Um, wish I could paint that well, um, but I can't. Not figure paint anyway, uh, but it shows the effects you can get with the kit. So if you can get that with it, then you know you're off to a good start. Packaging, it's a good looking box. Uh, it is with a nice, fantastic figure on the front. Uh, nice, vibrant colours. The box is a little bit flimsy, as you can see, top and bottom. Uh, it's not the strongest, and this hasn't been damaged. This is literally just how it comes. Take the bottles out. We have a look. So they're in your 17mm Vallejo style bottles, it's not Vallejo paint because that was my very first thought and it smells totally different. Um, whether it's manufactured in Spain I'm not sure but Spain seems to be a big manufacturing company for paints, AKR or were depending on what's going to happen, produced there, Vallejo R, uh, there's a few others that are as well and they all seem to come in these generic 17mm so bottles. So have a look, let's see what they say about where they're made, made in Spain which is just there, so I knew it would be. Acrylic water paints, matte finish and fast drying, valid for brush and airbrush painting, all services, shake before use, non-toxic, non-flammable. So nice, safe paints to use. Um, just looking for any other information on there, there's nothing really, so we'll pop that in the background. So like I say, vibrant colours in your normal 17 mil dropper bottles. They're all come custom to from Vallejo and AK and what have you. They need a good shake. Now from when I tested them, I can't remember what they're actually like, and I will admit I've never brush painted them, so you're going to literally see me do it live on camera. Um, the paint guide, uh, again, same as the front cover on the box. The rear cover shows you some of their other scale colour products, they do uh, paint trays, thinner, uh, other paint sets, so you've got non-metallic paint, sorry, non-metallic metal. Uh, two different sets, I'm not sure what the difference is. I can't really see. Those do their own primer as well. Would be interested in trying that to be fair. We're having trouble with Vallejo's primer uh, and going to AKs. It would be interesting to see what it's like. How available it is, I don't know. I got this from Hysterex and I think it cost £16.99 off the top of my head. I can't quite remember now. 
but you know, for what you get, you know, two, four, six, eight bottles of paint, yeah, it's about right. Two pound a bottle. Uh, inside, you get a guide to paint. So you got Indian skin on the left and white skin on the right. So step by step, uh, apply a base colour of pink flesh uh, and basic flesh from the bottom of the face and then cover the uptones and mixture of base of flesh and golden skin. So you can go step by step all the way through to give you a nice effect at the end. Same for the Indian paint. As you can see, same steps, it runs through them here, they're in all different languages, so you've got Spanish, uh, Italian, French, English, I believe that is. Well, it is English, I can tell that. <laughs> but yeah, it looks Ita Italian, French and Spanish, we've got there. Um, so it's a good little guide, very handy, so for somebody like me who's a noob to painting, especially flesh, because it's hard to paint, that's a good little starting point. So a nice touch to get in the kit, because none of the others get anything like that. Uh, so that's really good. Paint themselves, uh, if we pick a colour at random, what I've got, I've been using these uh, measuring cups lately as good little testers for paint, and this is where I tested AK's primer, done a little scratch test as well as you can see, see how drawable it is, that AK primer is superb, no problem with any of those colours, the black does go a little bit gritty compared to the white and the yellow and the grey is flawless, I've tested that before, so today we'll try it on a few of the different colours and see what the coverage is like, etc, so I need my well used paint tray which is just there pick a colour at random, we'll pick a light colour and we'll pick a dark colour so I'm going to test every single colour so a little bit of a shake, let's see if it does Vallejo's normal trick of blocking the nozzle which it does, it's a real pet hate to moment of Vallejo I believe they need to be stored side on to keep the nozzles free so it's a case Put some sharp in and getting it out. Now with Vallejo, it's often quite too, you know, it varies from consistency, consistency from paint pot to paint pot. Most of the time it needs a bit of thinning, and that is really thick paint. Now that's a bonus because you get a lot more paint in your bottle, so you can thin it to your own uh, desire, you know, consistencies, desires, etc. So if we brush it on unthinned, then I'll thin a little bit and we'll see what a brush is like. So like I said, we've got a prime surface, we'll use the primed white. And we'll see what it goes down like. Now, even though it's thick paint, it doesn't get the best coverage in the world. Just give it a little mix. Put it on a bit thicker. Yeah, even though it's very, very thick paint, I wouldn't say the coverage is as good as the likes of Vallejo, but light colours are always harder to A, paint, and B, especially airbrush. And to be fair, that is brush painting on quite well. Paints on nice and smooth. It does brush paint differently to Vallejo. If I'm honest, I'd say it's not quite as smooth as Vallejo and it's leaving the brush strokes in behind as well. I know I'm going over it a few times, we're just trying to spread it out. But it does seem to level quite well. Obviously it's thicker at the bottom where I've gone over it. But it does seem to level quite well. If we try I won't try it on the black as black's a very hard cover to colour to cover. But we'll try it on the yellow. I'm just gonna spread it round. We'll go back and even it out. So again, we're spraying over, you know, we're painting over a slightly lighter colour. Coverage is good. I mean, you never, well, you shouldn't really prime a figure in that colour. But if you're doing, say, you know, German or a uniform colour that required a dark yellow. Um, you may well airbrush your entire figure and then brush paint at the end. So I think a couple of coats of that, you'd have it sorted. We thin it a little bit. I grab some UMP thinner. I'm just going to put a couple of drops in there. And we'll see what the brush is like thinned. Like I say, first time brush painting them, so I don't know what it's going to do. Or what it's like. So we'll try on the white first again. A bit too much on the brush. 
So yeah, that's a lot thinner now. So ideally, if you're trying out effects, highlights and what have you, you might want thinner paint. It definitely brushes nicer thinned. And like I say, if you're trying to add highlights or even low lights, I'm guessing, and it is a guess because I'm not a figure painter, you'd want thinner paint to allow the transparencies to th show through. So there we go, top and bottom on the white. You can see it is a bit thinner on the bottom compared to the top. There's the line where we stopped before. If we go to the yellow as well. Again, doesn't look that much thinner on the yellow to be fair. Definitely brush paint's nicer thin. Maybe not thinner as much as I have. I just wanted to see what it went like on like. It's been very thin, but yeah, nice and smooth. It brushes really nice. Quite a satin finish when it's wet and it says it dries matte, which actually does. That's actually dried on the top there now within what a couple of minutes. So that's fine, absolutely superb. Um, if we very quickly move on to the a darker colour. Let's give it a bang on the hand like I always do. Is this one gonna come out? Nope. So common trait with these bottles, unless they are actually sealed. That is a possibility, because that one isn't coming out of there, so let's try opening up with something else. They could actually have a plastic seal on the top, looking at them. So there we go, this is the African Shadow, and to me this looks almost purple-like. Um, let's see what it actually paints like again. It's quite thick. I'm going to assume this being a darker colour, it is actually going to cover a bit better. So what we'll do is we'll use the bottom of each one. There we go. Much better. We'll be in a darker colour. It covers an awful lot better. Maybe I shouldn't have gone all over these thinking about it with the paler skin, but never mind. Now that does brush paint really nice. Lighter colours are always more difficult to paint, especially airbrush. Whites, you know, notorious colour for trying to paint. Uh, they require thinner coats, obviously, just like the brush paint does here. But that's brush painted, very nice, nice and smooth. Obviously, that wouldn't be a typical skin colour unless you're from a different planet. But it does go to show that the dark colours do brush paint very nice and we just go across it in a different way we can see how well it levels we'll leave that for a minute and we'll just quickly thin we'll put one drop in this time rather than two give it a quick mix and I may even try a little bit of the black let's see what it does uh, no problem straight over the black A brush full, even though I wiped it off, does go an awful long way. And as before, thinned, it does definitely brush paint a little bit better. A little bit thinner, obviously, because you have thinned the paint. And on black, you need another coat, without a doubt, because you can see the black showing through. But that's a real extreme test on the black. So if we do it on the the white again. And yeah, like I said, it's got a little bit more opaque just because it's thin paint. But like I say, if you're trying to add effects or highlights, then I'm guessing you want the opaqueness to show the detail underneath. But they do brush paint very nice. Smell wise, it has got a slight smell to it, like a. I don't know, hard to describe, quite fragrant if that makes sense. The only other paint I've ever smelled before that's fragrant is Andrew paint and that smells phenomenal. Um, I could almost smell that stuff all day long. So it obviously shows you that it's not produced by AK because that's a very distinctive smell in paint as to as Vallejo so although it's made in Spain it's not a rebranded bottle with a different 
sticker on as such so it is an independent company that's made their own paint which is always nice to see um, Verdict, yeah, brush paints very nicely maybe not as good coverage as Vallejo uh, and the life colour does cover very well as well, as well but with the different colours you get in this set you get a lot more different effects uh, it's going to be a lot more useful for adding highlights as shown in the instructions and what have you so it's a useful set and I'm sure I'll use it at some point along the way um, when I try my hand actual proper figure painting where I have to paint flesh which I'm not looking forward to at all but yeah it seems a cracking kit for the money it's about on par it works out for £2 a bottle uh, the little paint guide inside is a cracking little touch uh, very nice um, so very very handy set and I hope to use it very soon as soon as I use it I'll let you guys know but also I know Dan DC87 did a review on the forum that's on there somewhere he did a short video review of it that's where I've seen it, I would never have known about it otherwise so if you're looking for a flesh paint set, slightly different to all the others definitely give this a look um, like I say you've got plenty of different colours in there and maybe you'll find it useful okay so there you go, there's my review to, for today uh, I'll catch you on the forum so take care, bye bye thanks for that Paul, that's uh, quite a good review there, quite in depth and um, it's nice to get the brushes out and have a look at the paint and how it uh, works as well so uh, I mean I've got the live colour version of that set and um, I mean while on that scale 75 seems to be a, a few more paints in there it'll be interesting to see how it compares to the live colour set itself which is meant to be highly regarded as the best uh, uh, flesh painting set on the market so it'll be interesting to see how it all compares. Right so we're going to go quickly go back to the forum news now uh, I just want to go through the kits review section which is growing daily so thank you everyone for their efforts who's contributed to that thread it's excellent I think we're up to over 170 uh, reviews now of video reviews and photo reviews of kits that are available and people have bought and things like that so keep those coming everyone they're really really interesting to see and it's nice to see all the different ways that people review kits as well it's really interesting uh, so excellent so thanks for that uh, now next we're going to go through the monthly prize draw winners uh, we had last month we had the airfix helicopter support 148 support uh, kit for uh, the prize and Jeff won this hangar 2 on the site now, Jeff volunteers at Bovington Tank Museum in the Modellers Club there as well so I've seen him met him a couple of times when I've been up there uh, really nice guy and a well deserved win and uh, I believe he's already started building it and put up a thread as well and it looks looks really really nice so uh, he's posted it on our Facebook page as well which is great so uh, well done Jeff for that uh, good deserving winner this month, because we're a day late today, obviously I've already pulled uh, November's uh, prize draw winner as well, and that is uh, Hollywood Modelling. So well done, Hendrick. Hendrick wins uh, the Ravel 135 Leopard uh, 2A44 A4 NL, um, and uh, we're going to be doing a review on that kit, and then I'm going to send it off to straight away, uh, Hendrick. So well done on that. Let us know your name and address, and uh, we'll get it off in the postage straight away. So excellent. Uh, well done. Now. This month's uh, prize draw, December's, as it's Christmas, uh, we are going to do something a bit special. Uh, we are going to give three prizes away this month. Not one, not two, not three. Um, now we've got the main uh, prize, which will be sponsored by emodels.co.uk, uh, which is obviously uh, going to be this. It's a Tamiya Panther G. Great kit. Um, Paul's going to be reviewing it as well this month, I believe. It's in one of his review stacks to do. Um, and uh, so that's going to be a great prize. But we're also going to do, uh, we're also going to have the um, uh, Tamiya uh, 148 uh, Naval Sea Harrier FRS1. Now this is, I know this is an old kit, but it's um, it's one of it's a 148 Harrier, so who's to complain? But we're going to throw in that one as well, okay? And also we're going to have uh, the Academy 135 Panzer Kampfwagen 35T. This is meant to be a great kit. Again, I shall be uh, reviewing this this month so we can have a quick look. But this is going to be uh, a prize as well. So not only we've got the uh, E-Models Panther G, uh, we're going to have the 148 uh, C Harrow from Tamiya and the 35T, uh, sorry, 30, yeah, 35T from Academy. Uh, so it's three great prizes there for um, December. So uh, if you want to post on the uh, free monthly draw thread, get cracking. You've got one in three chance, so you've got a much more better chance now. I think we had 120 people enter last month for one prize. So if we get the same again, you've got a mu your odds are much reduced. So that's great. Um, so yeah, so that's it. We might even throw in a couple of just one spot prizes for starter pack of sanders and things like that for, for UMP sanders. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Let's see how, if we get over 200 entries, then we'll chuck in some UMP stuff as well. So that's great. 
Okay, next, I just want to talk about the uh, caption competition that's um, on uh, ISM at the moment. Now, this only started a day ago, and it is for this amazing kit that was donated by Greg Chairs. So thanks again, Greg. Uh, now, this is the uh, Aguillo's B17G Flying Fortress in 128 scale. Now, this um, is a, a, a balsa wood play aircraft that um, you can fit for our uh, radio control as well, so it can actually fly. Um, but... Uh, Obviously, I wouldn't do that. I was going to do a review of this, but I don't know the first thing about RC planes or, or balsa wood or anything like that, so I thought it would be pretty pointless me doing it because it would literally just be opening a box, looking at the bits and going, um... Uh, so I didn't think I'll, I didn't think I'd bother doing that, but it is up for a prize. Now, this is what it looks like uh, when you build it without putting the skin on or anything like that, and I think that looks pretty funky. I love that on um, on my shelf. I think that would look good, uh, and I was very tempted to keep it myself. Uh, but this is a £130 kit. Um, or two hundred and ten dollars, give or take a few dollars. Um, now that's a that's a, a an amazing prize to be donated, and um, you know we've been racking our brains for quite a while now because we've had it a few a couple of months, and uh, what to do for a competition for to, for a deserve. And I think a caption competition um, in the end was the easiest one because anyone can enter. Um, and it's a very funny uh, thing as well. I think we've had five pages after one day and I've been cracking up. Uh, there's a couple there that I've really wet myself at and I've got to say it is going to be very hard to pick a winner off of this already. Um, you know, we've got another two weeks of it. So it's running for two weeks um, and uh, I can see that there's going to be a lot of entries there. We're going to have to sift through a lot of things. So we might um, draft in some help on that from someone who hasn't entered um, just to help us pick a pick a winner on that because I think it's going to have to go to a vote on that one. But it's uh, it's a great prize and uh, a great competition already after one day. So thanks for that and uh, Greg, thanks again, mate. Right, I think now we're just going to quickly go over and have a look at how our builds are doing. Uh, first of all, we can have a look at mine and I think then we'll go on to Paul's afterwards. But uh, so here's where I am with my builds at the moment. Right, okay, so uh, how are my builds going? Well... As you can see uh, on this one, I haven't done an absolute oh, so stickers for the Soyers. Um, this I haven't done absolutely anything to this. Uh, this is done with um, this is my Citadel uh, Imperial Guard um, tank. Uh, this hasn't been anything done to it at all yet. This is all ready for paint, but um, as I said before, it's I've got a, a paint scheme that I'm going to try on it, and hopefully that will come out nice. So uh, not a lot happened on that one at all. Again, same with my figure build. My figure build, nothing has changed since last month. It's still at that stage where um, it's ready for paint. Basically, it's had all its base paints done. It's now ready for paint. So uh, I'm really, you know, there's not many things that scare me, but I'm really worried about this doing this figure. I really don't want to mess him up. So um, I'm reading up on all the techniques at the moment. So uh, so that's that. That's again nothing to talk about with those two whatsoever. We've got the uh, Javelin is all ready for primer now. As you can see, all zipped up, all ready to go. Um, you know, there's, there's, again, I think I had a little moan about last time about the fit issues on this kit and everything. And I'm gonna say there's, there's, there's you know, it, there's quite a lot of fit issues on there, but um, a lot of it has been done. I've been used, I've had this uh, Vallejo putty which uh, I never really used a lot of because it, it, it shrinks a lot and um, it takes quite a while to dry. You have to leave it overnight to dry. Um, it's very uh, runny. Uh, well, not runny. It's, I don't know. It just takes a long time to dry anyway. So, But it is a really, really fine applicator on it, as you can see. And if you cut it right at the very nib, you can really get it into some places with a minimal amount of putty um, and that's what I use it for is my precise putty. Now it literally is like on these this bit here um, it literally you just run it down there and you come along with a, a cotton bud lick a cotton bud and wipe it straight off like that and you get this perfect seam with no sanding no anything. Now sometimes it goes off into the little um, the, the panel lines and everything so it might need a little bit of rescribing which is, is just to empty out the panel lines uh, but apart from that it's um, it's, a, it's a great little putty method I've got to say and uh, I should be using it a lot more often for um, uh, precise stuff that's for sure now these were a bit of a pain okay I put these on and before I'd even got it off the sprue one of them had snapped they should be about another 15 millimeters longer than this uh, 10 or 15 millimeters longer uh, so I took the executive decision, rather than try to make glue it back on, which was a near-on impossibility, 
Um, and this is it snapped on a sprue, and this is just literally I didn't. It snapped where I wasn't cutting it, which is really weird as well. If I'd have cut it and it snapped, I could understand. So, I, what I did is I actually shortened the other one as well to the same length, and um, they were so fine. They, these really need uh, aftermarket metal parts. Uh, I've got to say that. Um, I think that I'm, I'm sure the aftermarket guys will jump on that very very soon but these really because they're very flexible um, you've got to take great care with them but the aftermarket guys you definitely want metal ones of those if you can get them as and when they appear which I'm sure they will uh, but uh, putting on the fuel rod and things like that again very gappy um, let's see if I can get you in here just so you can have a good look okay let's wait for this to, to refocus if it's going to <laughs> there you go okay that's a bit better all right so let's just grab a grab a little pointer here so you can see uh, but uh, as you can see here um, okay uh, these bits went on quite quite nicely which are the cockpit sides and everything but if I turn this round and I'm going to try to do this while there we go Oop. Okay, as you can see here, this didn't quite fit properly here, so it needed a feel, and it needed a feel all the way along, and inside too, on the inside um, line here. So it needed mold, it needed filling all the way along, and uh, up the rear here too as well. As you can see, wasn't a perfect fit. Luckily, I was able to do that before I put it on the the uh, uh, plane, on the aircraft. But then you turn it around, as you can see, uh, just here. You know, it's needed filling all the way along. So, um, you know, it's only fine filler. It's not a hard job, that one. As I say, using this this method with, with the uh, Vallejo uh, plastic stuff is really good. I've got to say, for precise work, it is excellent. So, um, but it's the same It's the same all round with this kit, unfortunately, that um, it's, it is very, very close to being an excellent kit. I mean, really, uh, and it's probably me only being a bit of a pedant, um, but uh, there are, there are faults with it, and um, you know, you it's for for the sort of money that you're paying for it, even though it is a big kit, um, you would expect it to to be a little bit better. But um, I think personally, overall, that's that's come out quite nice. Bit of TLC, bit of patience, and there's nothing. But that, look at that. I think that just look, that's an awesome plane, isn't it? It really is. Look at that. That's going to look so good on a shelf. Uh, another another big problem I had, let me just zoom you in again, because this one really irked me. Um, as you can see on these, now these um, are uh, intakes, as you can see, quite a bit of filler along there. Okay, and it's the same on the other one. Now these were really fiddly to join together, but once together, to, to, to fill them and sand them was not an easy task. And as you can see, <laughs> Uh, the same had to happen on this one um, and where they joined the fuselage here um, there was a big drill hole um, and there was a step in there which wasn't on the they had a, 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 like a locket locating the whole thing at the bottom of this had a long locating thing along it here and uh, I put it in and it literally this back end was sticking right up here because they put this drill hole they drilled this it's like the machine had machined into it and it drew it stopped and then gone down and stepped down and then done the proper size so you're left with this big hole you've got to fill and then um, you know this doesn't you've got to take it down inside carve away inside as well so not not particularly brilliant um, but as I say just a, a little bit of work and a little bit of extra TLC and uh, and we're there but um, you know I think I mean I can to be honest with you you know it's a, it's leaps and bounds for airfix without a doubt I mean it's uh, it's for airfix it's excellent work and i have really really even though those little qualms i mean don't get me wrong i haven't not enjoyed doing those little bits because it's made a, a kit that should normally fall together just a little bit challenging which was excellent uh, which is obviously what we all like anyway but i mean that really does look the nuts i think so anyway um, i can't wait to get that painted which hopefully fingers crossed is going to be in the next four weeks now also just move that over here um i've got all the um let's see you zoom you in again i've got all the uh undercarriage and everything and the wheels all done i've also done the cowling uh hairspray method on those uh, i'm just trying to see if you can see this um, let's have a look all right you can see where i've done a bit of hairspray method on there and i've done that on each one 
um, and that's come out much nicer than using when I try I tried to use this worn effects uh, from uh, AK and I've got to say I had no joy with that whatsoever I had an absolute pain with that I don't like it I know other people have worked okay with it I'd, I'd much prefer just decanting a bit of hairspray into a, uh, a cup pouring that into my airbrush and spraying the airspray much better results and you know you know what you're going to get so I, hope, I don't know if you can see that properly but uh, so yeah, so that, that'll look nice I think once again. Now I know I said on the other video that I had a problem fitting these. In the end, um, as you can see, let's just have a look. In the end on the rear they had these lo big locating lugs uh, that married up with these holes here. You, know, you see this hole here? And these locating pins marrying up with those. And they just didn't work. They didn't fit. In no way, shape, or form would they go together. So what I've done, I've taken the lugs off of here, taken them right down, um, and anything extra on there, I've flattened it right out. And I can now position it exactly as it's meant to be, where it wouldn't fit before. So, um, so a bit of work there again. But uh, I think that will come out nice, and that'll look really good on there. But obviously, we're going to go for. Um, I'm not going to go for a battered one because a lot of these were kept up quite nicely. Um, but uh, as you can see house in here I've obviously done the, the wheels and the tyres and everything as well and all the undercarriage it's all ready to go on um, in my bits and pieces box I've also done uh, for this as well obviously got the FOD covers and everything um, here and uh, I've done the steps uh, now I've done a hairspray method on that as well it's got outcloud underneath there hairspray over and then this lovely red paint um, you know, you just can't beat Tamiya red paint, I don't think. <laughs> but um, it's uh, if I get rid of my Tamiya paints, I'm going to keep the red, the red, the black, and the white. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to do do chipping on that as well. So that'll look nice. That'll look worn because that would be worn, uh, well and truly. Fog covers I'm going to leave like this. I'm just going to dirty them up a bit with a bit of wash, um, just to give them a bit of grime on there. But they're they're going to look nice on there as well. Obviously, the fuel tank, the drop tanks, and the um, and the uh, house streaks. They're all ready to be painted. Uh, they've, they've been primed. I've just got to prime the main model itself, um, which I'm hoping to get to do, I would hope, in the next couple of days. Um, and I'm going to leave that to set. I'm going to do it in Alclad, which I haven't done. I've done bits and bobs in Alclad, but I haven't used the Alclad primer for a big thing like this, which I have to do because I'm going to Alclad the bottom. Uh, so uh, that will be interesting. Um, I'm just hoping that I can get it to spray right, because if you spray it too much, it's going to lump up on there, but that does look good, doesn't it? Hey, how cool does that look? Right, next and last, uh, but not by no means certain as least, is the uh, P2 that I'm doing at the moment. Uh, now this is for obviously for Lewis's group build. Uh, with this, I did buy the photo etch for this, um, but I haven't used it. Uh, two reasons. Uh, main reason is time. I just haven't got enough time to get on and and because pretty much most of this. On here has to be taken down completely. Um, I haven't got the time to do it this month. I'm just going to be so busy. It's uh, what with my um, my, bu my business and everything. Um, it's really quite a busy time of year. So, uh, so uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to buy another one of these kits because it's only nine pounds. So I'm going to buy another one of these, and I've got a really nice, cool idea for a diorama for it. So I'm going to save the PE for that because um, this is my one thir first 135 anyway. But as you can see, um, I've put, got all the, the all the components are together now. I've just got to fit the turret together. Let's zoom you in a bit. I've just got to, uh, the bottom of the turret's got to go on and everything, but everything fits together really nicely. There's no problems whatsoever with this kit considering it's 40 years old. Some nice detail on here. This is all extra that you've put on, like you've got the spade and underneath that you've got an ax and and all this and it's gone together really really nice um, you know I literally I, I think I threw that together in about five ten minutes a bit of time extras in bo bing bang bosh and it's all done um, and then you've got the hull um, I did the same as what Lewis did uh, uh, Lewis Toledo Coladito one he uh, suggested fill these in with bit cards so I've copied you Lewis thank you very much for that tip and as you can see so get rid of all those I think, believe these were originally for RC uh, it's an early RC kit, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, you, the wheels you can leave uh, loose, but I've, I've glued all these in. The end ones I've left loose just in case I have a, uh, a problem with the track at all, because uh, it's obviously this horrible, you know, plastic stuff. But um, what I can do is put this together, put it on, and then I can move it if I see fit still, which is nice. 
nice little option. But apart from that, I mean, literally, that's just got to be glued onto there, <laughs> and that's pretty much done. Um, I'm not going to put the commander in it for this time. I'm going to keep him um, and the other uh, soldiers that come with it for the diorama that I've got planned for for when I do the next one with the PE kit and everything. But I've done some a couple of little things like I've drilled out the exhaust here and things like that, um, which which it needed. Um, but apart from that, um, it's a very easy kit to get it. And, and to be honest with you, it's surprising that it's 40 years old, 1974. I mean, 40 year old kit and Tammy were doing, you know, 40 years ago. I, w I was I was a little bear, a little wee baby when this kit was first moulded. Um, and uh, I would imagine they cleaned the moulds up in the time, but it's still clean and crisp and an excellent effort. And uh, I'm really impressed with um, that that stuff uh, but it is meant to be a classic as well everyone says it's a classic kit and they all remember building it when they were young so but uh it's been a nice easy and it's a nice size as well it's not too big not too small as you can see but anyway that is my build uh for this month hopefully i will have the javelin finished before the next show um i will have this finished before the next show i have to because oh excuse me uh, because uh, the group build finishes on 31st of uh, December, so that's got to be done before that. Um, I'm hoping if I get some time over Christmas, we'll have to get the paint scheme, at least some of it, down on that. And you might get an idea. I might give you a sneak preview of that. But I'll try something different for that. Uh, but really, I just want to get that javelin done. Um, I'm aching to get some paint on her and get her finished. And then I've got to go and buy a big glass cabinet to try and put her in. So, um, so yeah, so that's my update. So back to the show. Well, as you can see, I've just got to put some paint on the uh, uh, on the uh, javelin, and uh, the P2 is just got to be built up and then uh, painted as well. Only a couple of things left to do on that. So, um, but that's where I am at the moment. Now, I'm going to have a bit of a choice. I don't know. I'm a bit stuck to to see what I'm going to build uh, after um, I've finished the javelin and the P2, which I'm hoping to get both of those finished by Christmas, obviously because they're both finished. But anyway, so in the new year, I'm starting with a clean slate. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys um, on the site what I should build next. Now, um, I'm going to have a, a, a range of things. I'm going to put a car up, which uh, I've never built before in my life. So that will be interesting. I can put a car up. Uh, I've got several cars that I can do. Um, I've got uh, a couple of World War II planes and I've got a sci-fi plane and an armour. So, and I'm going to put them up and then I'll let you, you guys decide on the site um, and you can really stitch me up if you want to or you can let me build what I want to build. <laughs> but uh, I thought that would be a good idea because I really I can't make up my mind what I want to build next. So I'm going to give you four or five options and then you can tell me what I'm going to build. Okay, uh, so I thought that would be quite fun. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so <laughs> we'll see about that one. So let's go over and have a look where Paul is at the moment, uh, his update and uh, where he is on his builds and everything. Hi guys, Paul at ISM. Uh, my update video for this month's news show, so I'll go through my upcoming reviews, uh, my current builds, uh, a completed build to show in the news show for a change from me. Um, so we'll go over to the bench and have a look at those in a minute, and I'll go through the kits behind me as well. Uh, busy month, uh, we had Telford at the beginning of it, myself and Lee spent two very enjoyable days there. Even in Lee's company it was very enjoyable. Uh, we met a few of you guys, which was fantastic, met plenty of other modellers. Uh, seen some absolutely awesome modelling work there. Uh, bought some models, saw plenty of other models I wanted. Uh, like I said, it was my first time there this year, as it was Lee's, and we are just thoroughly looking forward to next year. Cannot wait. So, as I said, it was great meeting some of you guys, and we are just can't wait for next year. It's absolutely fantastic. So, my upcoming reviews for this month we've got Edward's SU27 UB, which I didn't quite get done this month, but it'll be my first review out for December. Uh, time's run away with itself this month, been very busy building and what have you, so uh, it's really gone away this month, flown by. Uh, we've got Tamiya's 135th Panther G, so that's an awesome kit, uh, I'll do a full inbox review of that. Uh, and for a change as well, we've got Tamiya's 124th Ferrari F40, my favourite all-time car, absolutely iconic supercar. Uh, any car that spits flames is a good car in my book. Uh, I'm not a car builder per se, but... For me, this is something I'll enjoy doing. Hopefully I can do it justice, but I'll give this a full unbox review. It's quite a simple kit, as all Tamiya's car kits are, but it looks a nice kit, and like I say, it makes a change as well to review another car on the YouTube channel as well. Um, other videos coming up, we've got another uh, technique guide on the ME109, which will start laying down some of the camo work, so we'll go through airbrushing, 
uh, laying down colours and maybe we'll move on to masking and that one as well. We'll see how far we get through it. Um, there's an upcoming wa uh, video on how to use uh, our UMP washers which will be released over the next week. Uh, and there'll probably be the odd other video in there for myself as well, and Lee. I know Lee's got plenty coming up. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll move over to my workbench and we'll go through my current builds and any builds I've actually finished recently. Okay, so over on the workbench, um, current build in front of me right now is completed model. Uh, it's my Great Wall Hobby 148 MiG-29. Uh, it's a full concealer 9-13 version. Thoroughly enjoyed this kit. It literally is one of the best kits I've ever built. Uh, really can't recommend it enough. Absolutely loved every minute of building it. It's come out fantastic, the paintwork, I'm just over the moon with those eight cam paints are just truly superb. Really can't recommend them highly enough. Um, absolutely phenomenal. I'm not going to start picking this up and moving it around because I don't like moving it about, I don't want to damage it. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to go to my other camera and we're going to be handheld and we'll have a quick look around it. Okay, so on the handheld cam now, uh, I don't want to move this around because I don't want to risk uh, breaking anything off it, so I've literally placed it on the uh, homemade landing strip I made for it. Uh, like I say, it's one of the best kits I've ever built, attention to detail is just absolutely, truly superb, uh, phenomenal. If we go in a bit closer up, you can really some of that, see some of that surface detail on it, so all the riveting marks, uh, panel lines. Surface detail is just truly superb. Obviously, it's been accentuated by our wash, which has really, really brought out the detail. Uh, we've got some Mr. Hobby buffer balls on the back, a bit of Alclad, uh, just to bring out those exhausts, and they've turned out absolutely fantastic. Decals were phenomenal, uh, some of the best I've ever used. They went down really well. And in total, there's about 320 on this thing underneath and all around it. Most of them you can't even see, if I can go in close. They're just little decals entirely everywhere, all over the aircraft. Cockpit's very nice, uh, nice detail. If we take off that canopy, you can have a look in there. If we can get you, there we go. So, nice sense of detail. Really is a really nice kit. Um, highly tempted to do the 9 13 version. Sorry, 9 12 rather, this is the 9 13. Um, just to add it to the set with this one. And I know very recently, or very soon, this month I think it is, they're going to release an F-15, so I'll definitely be buying that one. Uh, like I say, the A-Cam paints, I uh, sprayed them freehand. They look absolutely superb, really give that faded worn effect. And we've added pre-shading, post-shading, faded paint. Uh, it's really added quite a lot of interest to this. So there's, so there's my MIG. Um, <laughs> Like I say, very happy with this. This takes pride of place on my shelf. Um, Ordnance was fantastic in this thing as well. All pre, you didn't have to do a thing other than cut two, two sprues off and away you went. And they turned out fantastic. And in each one of those missiles, there's probably oh, 15 decals on each one. Absolutely ridiculous amount of decals. But they add to the end effect, which for me is a stunning looking model. So I'll move this one out of the way and we'll get the others out and have a look at those. Right, okay, so there's the MIG out of the way. Really hate moving that model around. Uh, always terrified I'm going to break something on it. Um, right, my other current builds, we've got the Airfix 109, which you've seen recently in the video, is pre-shaded badly, as I always say. But nevertheless, it's all pre-shaded, uh, ready for some camo work. Waiting on a replacement canopy from Airfix, so as soon as you get that, I can crack on with it. Um, but there she is as she stands now. Nothing really to see other different than you've seen in the video, but it's still a current build of mine. So like I say, once we get that canopy, We'll move on and we'll start getting some paint on it and we'll get this thing finished. It won't take much longer now. We've done all the hard bits. Um, so that's that. It's a cracking kit. If anyone's looking for a first aircraft, you go far wrong by beating that. Second current build of mine. Uh, it's a figure build. Yes, Lee. I'm cheating by doing it, I know. But I'm doing this for my girlfriend, Hannah. Absolutely loves the Despicable Me Minions. Uh, myself and Lee bought a couple of these each at uh, Scale Model World. Uh, I got this one for my girlfriend Hannah because she loves Minions and loves Christmas. Uh, and I bought one um, that looks a bit like me. So poor Bugger is going to be on my workbench as my little mascot because he looks a bit rotund and looks a bit like me. But never mind. Um, so there we go. Cracking kits. Absolutely superb. Resin from Retro Kit. Uh, a guy called Dominique who me and I had the pleasure of meeting at Scale Model World. Absolutely fantastic guy. Very friendly. And the, these resin kits are absolutely superb. The detail. It's very nicely moulded, uh, well cast should I say, 
Um, he's probably 80% painted now. Got his eye and his eye glassware, I suppose it is. His hands and his present banana to paint. And I'm also putting him on a diorama setting, which I'll reveal at a later date. So he's coming along nicely. It's, it's different brush painting, hand painting, figure painting. Um, but, you know, it's something to do while something else is drying. And I am enjoying it. Um, and I can see me do more over time. So, like I say, my girlfriend Hannah absolutely loves this. And um, I'm sure it's going to be part of our Christmas decorations this year, which is great. So there's our Merry Banana Minion. Uh, my ongoing E-Models build, which is Tammy's 132 F4U uh, Corsair. Absolutely stunning kit this is. Uh, plodding along slowly because as I say every month I can't just go ahead and build this. If it was mine it would be built already. Because I'm building it on videos I can't bang out 12 videos in a week. So I try and steady it to a video every couple of weeks or every three weeks to you know give people a chance to watch mm -hmm. them. Absolutely superb kit. Buttoned up the fuselage in the last video. As you can see underneath test painted it. Absolutely perfect. All the panels are on and they are absolutely spot on too. So next step on this is the engine which I'm really looking forward to doing. Uh, cockpit's looking fantastic, very very happy how that's turned out. Uh, the engine is quite a big process next and that'll be a long video and we'll do that the same way as we get to this in a minute. I've done this F-16's engine with Alclads, Buffalo Muster Hobbies, various metal tones, uh, a little bit of weathering in there and we'll sell that gets along. So there'll be another part of this up soon as well uh, which I say we'll be focusing mainly or mostly on the engine. So that's a phenomenal plane to build. Kit is just out of this world, absolutely stunning. Uh, I'm getting a good collection of 132 Tamiya's now. I've got the Mustang, the Spitfire I got from Telford. So really, really enjoying these. They're, they're not a quick build. Uh, they take time, as I found out on the F-16. But this thing's absolutely stunning. So there'll be another part of this out pretty soon, hopefully over the next week or so. Uh, and my personal ongoing build at the minute is Tamiya's. 132 F16. It's been a bit of a funny stage at the minute. Um, we've got all the engine in, I'll get to all this in a minute. The rear cowling, which I had a nightmare with, and I'll, again, I'll explain that in a minute. So we've got the front and rear landing bay. They're in situ now, they've been put together, uh, painted uh, in white. They were then weathered with our dark dirt weather and wash. The older one, the faulty one, that actually went grey rather than dark dirt brown. Uh, and this has given a great effect in the landing bay, really brought out some of the details. It's not finished yet, um, still got a bit more work to do in there. We've got the front white metal landing gear legging, uh, the wheel on, I'll just put the tyre on for now just to show it to you. It comes off in two seconds, it's a rubber tyre as well, and the wheel actually does move, so that'll have a bit of probably concrete wash in there as well to show off the tyre treads. But absolutely stunning kit, I mean it literally, the engine compartment and the rear landing bay is all screwed in position. Um, and we'll get to the engine in a minute at the back. So, landing is coming on well, I say. We're not finished just yet. Um, we've got the rear part, so the engine's in situ. As you can see, it's on a little runner there. You can see it with the nozzle at the back. And we also have this part for it as well, uh, in two-tone uh, Alclad. Uh, now, a bit of a dilemma, not a dilemma, a catastrophe the other week. Um, bought a brand-new bottle of Alclad primer, was... Just about to prime this up in our cloud so it dried nice and quick so I could carry on working. And I managed to knock the bottle over and in a reaction grabbed it, flicked it, it went all up me, all over my t-shirt, destroyed the t-shirt of mine, all over my uh, jogging bottoms, destroyed those, all over my spray booth and sadly all over this. Now cellulose paint isn't good to plastic and very silly my immediate reaction was to grab some paper towel and wipe it off. Uh, the result mess looked like a Blue Peter catastrophe, uh, which was just a melted, sticky, tissue-infected mess. Uh, I really nearly walked out in the garden and slept my wrists, because um, I knew this was going to be a costly part to save. Uh, I spoke to Cohen about five minutes after doing it on Skype, and even he said I look suicidal. Um, so I inquired about new parts. Uh, companies never got back to me, which is the main Tamiya imported UK the hobby company so that was great to them they never even replied to my email which was shocking customer service um, sod law there's three components of this single uh, cowling and they're on the biggest sprues in the kit uh, which hold the top of the fuselage as well so they're going to be the most expensive so I sat there for two hours whilst talking to Cohen on Skype with some of our sanding sticks and a polishing stick and I set to work trying to save it 
uh, I had to re-rivet it. I don't know if you can see the detail on there or not. Yeah, you can. So I re-riveted it all, uh, sanded it, polished it, and I believe I've saved it. Fits in position perfectly, so there's no long-lasting damage, and I've saved myself a hell of a lot of hassle. I don't know what I'm mucking about. So very, very happy to say that. It's not 100% perfect, uh, and I do get a bit funny over stuff like this, but for me, it's perfectly adequate. Uh, now, the idea of this is, is that friction fit, you literally pull that off, and out comes the engine. So there's all the engine bay. We can tip it up so you can see in there. Painted. Like I said, I detailed it all, painted it all, and you can barely even see that. You can see right through to the front. I'm going to come back and we get some light in there. Like I said, I spent ages painting all this, and you can't even see it really. But I know it's there, and that's the important thing. So that's the idea of that. The engine slides out. Um, you're then left with this, which is the engine and all different components. And you literally unscrew that, pop that off. So there's the part that was damaged and I've saved. So again, painted on the inside and it's just primed at the minute. That was just to check for imperfections. And this is the engine itself. It looks a bit like a lightsaber. Uh, <laughs> uh, so like I said before, this has all been done in our clads, Mr. Hobby buffer balls. Uh, to give it all varying tones. I've weathered in here with a bit of titanium Tamiya and then I took it off with UMP thinner so all the race surfaces were aluminium and inside was titanium and as you can see it's very shiny, very pretty and the idea of that other cowling is this. So this is what you display it on this little dolly to put this engine on um, so you literally clip it in position if I can remember which way it goes which is that way like so, and you can see all the varying tones of Alclad I've used. So we've got dark, aluminium, and then the masking on this, which was an absolute nightmare to do. On there, the jet exhaust. And then on the nozzle itself, we've got Mr. Hobby buffer balls. And you literally then click that in position like so, and then that is displayed on the dolly. So it's very, very impressive. Uh, you can take it in at the aircraft whenever you want. Uh, and I display it on the desk next to the aircraft on its dolly like it's having routine maintenance or you can pop it in and keep it on display in there so phenomenal kit, absolutely beautiful uh, it really is a work of art uh, as all their 132's are and I'm really looking forward to building that 132 Mustang because that is my favourite all time plane so there we go, there's all my current builds uh, completed build as you've seen so next month uh, I have the Minion and his diorama completed uh, I'll have a bit more progress on the F-16 and the F-4U, but I don't think I'll be taking anything else on just yet. Uh, I think two 132 Tamiya uh, builds at once is enough for anybody, plus the ongoing Technique Guide video and the other little projects and videos I do for ISM uh, are enough for anybody. So that'll be uh, where I'm at next time, so if you get a bit more progress. So, Paul from ISM, uh, enjoy the rest of the new show and I'll take you back to the link. Thanks for that, Paul. I think you'll agree that MIG turned out absolutely awesome. It really did to, uh, turn out a really nice kit. I think he's done really well on that. So uh, we look forward to seeing those come together, the other stuff as well, and the BF109 videos uh, progressing. Uh, we're going to go just have a quick look at what we're going to review for uh, December. What reviews coming up for December? Okay, so uh, reviews coming up for December are going to be uh, one I should have done last month, which was the... Uh, MiG-21MF 20, Bunny Fighter from Eduard. Um, I have um, been meaning to do this for a long, long time, as I keep saying, but it will definitely be done for, for December. So that's the, probably going to be the first review that's going to come up as well. Um, we're also going to have um, uh, all three of the GB prizes, the Cold Warrior GB prizes. So we're going to have the A7K Corsair II from Hobby Boss. That's going to be reviewed. We're also going to be doing um, the Velom Antonov AN4. It's a bit of a different kit, this one. So uh, I haven't even had a look in the box yet, actually. But, but that looks very interesting indeed. So we're going to be doing that as well. Uh, I'm also going to be doing uh, this one, which is the Academy 35T, Panzer Camp 35T. Um, this looks like a nice kit as well. So this will be uh, for a review in December. We'll also be doing the Leopard before this gets shipped out to our, uh, Hendrik. So, uh, sorry Hendrik, I'm going to review it before it gets to you. 
but this will be up for review as well. We're also um, going to be doing uh, the 2000 AD uh, Judge Anderson from Dark World Creations. And again, that looks like a very nice model as well. So looking forward to, to you know having a review on that one as well. And uh, I think that's about it. I don't think there's anything else. I think that'll be it. I think um, Paul's got a couple he's going to do. He's going to do the Panther G before, obviously, that goes out to December's competition as well. And uh, I think he's got uh, one of his uh, Eduard kits he's going to do as well. So that's excellent. So uh, loads of reviews hopefully coming up from December. So keep you busy. So lots of watching material for those two weeks off over Christmas that you've got. Fingers crossed that you've got that time off over Christmas. Um, and so you don't have to spend it all with your family. You can spend some time with ISM and, and watch some reviews. Uh, but yeah, so that's all the models that's coming up for December. Right, okay, to finish up, I'm just going to do a few shout outs. First one is to uh, Chris and Alex Modeling. Uh, now, these guys got their own YouTube, it's a father and son team, and they're great videos to watch. And uh, I had the great pleasure of meeting them both at, at Telford uh, last month, and um, I think a smashing couple of lads. And uh, it looks like they really enjoy their modelling as well. And their their uh, YouTube videos, um, you know, show that as well. So if you haven't seen them before, please go over and subscribe to Chris and Alex Modelling and uh, see what they're all about. It's a great little father-son team. Uh, the second one is Pedro Fernandez. Uh, now, Pedro's uh, joined ISM recently, but I've been watching his channel for a while now. And, um, you know, he's uh, very good the way he describes how he does his modelling and everything. His videos are very clear and concise. I think he's Portuguese. I hope I got that right, Pedro. <laughs> All right. Um, but uh, I think um, some, some cracking builds there and some really nice videos as well. So he's definitely worth a look. Okay, and last of all is uh, one of the mods on ISM, Gavo909. Um, now Gav's got his own channel as well, um, and uh, his videos he's very good. His videos have been great. I love, like, like watching his updates and everything. Um, I have known that for his birthday, uh, which was a couple of days ago, he has received a brand new HD camcorder. So fingers crossed, Gav, your videos are going to be in better quality than they are already, mate. So I should look forward to seeing your next video after you're able to play with your new toy. Um, but uh, that's about it for the shout outs and everything and for the new show uh, for November, stroke December the 1st. I do apologise about it being late. It's been a very hectic month. Um, but I just, as, as always, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who takes part in ISM, whether it be on the YouTube channel, the f uh, face Facebook channel, or on our forum as well. I mean, uh, obviously, our, it wouldn't be anything without you guys, and uh, we really love the atmosphere there. It's really nice to have and to see. So um, until next time, or until December show, goodbye. <laughs>